Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Sunday Morning Coffee with Lisa. I'm Spiritual Coach Lisa Hop. It is Sunday, August 11th. Thank you for joining me. I hope where you are, it is a beautiful and peaceful day. This week's topic is something that I felt everyone needed to hear this week more than ever. I also saw it a lot on social media, so that told me that it was a divine message that heaven also wanted us to hear this week in order to help us. The topic is the spiritual truth that for one second you are never alone. There is always a departed loved one, a spirit guide, and an angel around you. And sometimes it's more than one, depending on what you're going through. Departed loved ones are those people that are connected to us in on earth, through our time on earth. They can be a family member that has crossed over to heaven. And it doesn't even have to be a family member that you knew. Sometimes the one most around you is the great grandmother, the great great grandmother that knows that it's their kind of help that you need the most. It can also be a teacher that you are close to that's crossed over, or a classmate that you went to school with, or a friend. It can be the stranger that you're kind to. If you're in healthcare, it can be the patient that you tried to save or help or treated. Whomever that you've touched in an emotional way or touch an emotional way through the connection of being connected to you through blood, that is who we draw around you. And there's always at least one. Um, no one is ever left alone. Sometimes they do switch around. So uh, the person that you most want to be around you is most likely there. But if they cannot be there because they have to help somebody else, you always have somebody to supplement. There have been times in my life where I knew that there would be one of my grandmothers around me, but sometimes my one of my grandmothers could not be around me. So then I would get a grandfather or I would get an uncle. And I always took great comfort in that. I always, I always have been able to tell um, most of the time who is there and even why that particular person wants to be there. So that's that's been a great blessing for me that I have had that knowing, that understanding. And you can also, by the way, um, gain that perception as well. We all have corners of our eyes that can see the invisible world around us. And you know there's been a time when you have turned thinking you just saw something out of the corner of your eye and then nothing's there. You just saw a departed loved one or an angel or a spirit guide. And I feel most of the time it's probably a departed loved one. So when you do turn, try to turn slowly. But if you turn quickly, just understand that most likely the third eye, which is located in the middle of your brow, was probably closed or is closed. And so when you turned, you probably aren't going to see them. But take great comfort in, in that you did catch one of your departed loved ones and helpers around you. They come around to assist us. They can't go against our free will, but they do listen to us. They do feel us. They do know what we're truly asking for, and they are a part of our lives. They can never leave us because of love, but departed loved ones are not ghosts. They're not stuck on earth. They just want to be around us because of love, and you can always count on them. Please know that. And it is okay, by the way, to talk to them. I say, if you noticed my tone a bit, it's okay. Um, I was raised in a very traditional religion, Catholic, and I was taught, as I'm sure some of you were, that it's not okay to interact with the other side, to talk to anyone or any being, um, uh, you know, in a direct way, perhaps, um, you, you're, you are allowed to pray, um, um, for my uh, upbringing, um, confession was an important part of going through the intermediary of a priest in order to ask for forgiveness. 
But I can tell you quite honestly that I've learned in my life and I even knew before I came into this life that it's all right to talk to God directly. It is all right to talk to Jesus directly. It is all right to talk to your loved ones directly. You do have to detach. You do have to back up. Um, if you look for them, if you wait for them, um, if you force or pressure in any way, you will not perceive them because there is a veil between us and heaven it is literally just probably no more than a half an inch in front of you or around you, but that veil can thicken very easily. And so when we look for something in any way or watch for someone in any way, or, you know, um, emotionally go to someone in any way, we're blocking what we want so much from us. So it's very important to yes, talk to them, to yes, share with them, to yes, ask for them to be around you, but also to stay in the present moment, centered on the task in front of you, centered on being calm in the present moment of your life. And then you will perceive them all around you. You'll see the signs. You'll feel the touches. You might even hear their voice. And so see what you can do to work with that. Because we get so caught up in this very crazy, very fast-paced world that we often will miss the very help that's around us and the signs of our loved ones around us. And they want us to know they're there. It makes them so happy when, even if we don't know who it is, if we just acknowledge that someone is there. It makes them so happy because they want you to know they're there because they love you so much. And it's also important to know that departed loved ones, even if you didn't know them, love you. And that's okay. Just say thank you. Just thank them for being there. Thank them for helping you. They don't ask for anything from you. They just feel great joy in in being able to serve you. So that's also very important to keep in mind. I do feel you should always be thankful because it's a higher vibration. And um, as I said, they like when you know they're around and that you're happy they're around. But um, there's nothing really that they're asking of you in return besides that. Now, also, there are beings around you called angels. And there are different uh, lesions of angels. Um the ones most likely around you are your guardian angels. And there are one, at least one to two guardian angels assigned to you when you come to this earth. And they stay with you from birth till death. They're always there, at least one of them. And they protect you against chance. They will also buffer you and protect you if you are supposed to experience something. They also can be guides. They also can be comforting. They have no... Well, your departed loved ones don't anymore either, but they have they have no uh, ability to judge you. You cannot make them angry, no matter what you do and who you are. They just love you unconditionally. They serve with joy. They are created of the energy of heaven, which is all love, um, all immeasurable love, all understanding. They were created from that very source energy. So you have no other abilities but the ability to love with joy and service. Their job is serving. The angel author and lecturer, Lorna Byrne, talks not only about guardian angels, but also what she calls unemployed angels. There are so many angels, you probably cannot count them. So you not only have angels that are assigned to you, that are with you constantly, you also can call upon more angels. There are angels not assigned to anyone that will rush to you. Sometimes they rush to you anyway, but it is okay to ask for them. Sometimes angels stay back waiting for you to ask for them because of free will. So whenever you need to feel safe or stressed, um, just need, yeah, just need to feel calm um, need help, need answers, you are welcome to ask for these unemployed angels to come around you. And I ask for my angels a lot. If I feel I want to ask for uh, more abundance, I go to the angels. If I feel I want to have more wisdom, more patience, more understanding, more knowledge, I go to the angels. Um, just to be a better person, I go to my angels. I, I simply say, angels, please surround me. Here is my request. Thank you so much. And then I hand it to them. If I start to worry, 
I put the worry like a ball in my hand and I hand it over to my angels. I know that they're working for me and they love their work. And I don't go to them perhaps every day, but it's okay to do that if you want. We have power. We should not be codependent, but we are allowed to go to them frequently. So please know you're not alone and it's okay to ask for help. Now, the second being around you is called a spirit guide. Spirit guides are people, or well, they're beings now, but they were people on earth. And they're not people necessarily that you are your departed loved ones. Most of the time, they're not. Mother Teresa is a spirit guide. John Denver, the singer, is a spirit guide of the environment. Spirit guides are people that have lived on earth and lived on other planets and now have enough wisdom and higher ascension to be able to let go of their more human qualities, such as judgment, anger, lack of understanding. They now have that capacity like an angel to love unconditionally and they want to help. They want to be a teacher. They want to be a professor now. So instead of coming to earth to serve, um, they're going to stay in heaven and serve you as part of a group of students that they are assigned to, to help. And they help with a different, uh, different specialties. Um, there is a joy specialty guide. There is uh, relationship guides. There are health guides. There are life purpose guides. Um, whatever you may, may need help with, there is a guide that can be assigned to help you. And sometimes these guides are not famous guides. Sometimes they're not uh, a celebrity or um, a famous humanitarian. They can just be someone who very quietly lived many lives and now is ready to play a part in being a teacher. So maybe you have a Native American guide or you have a, someone who lived a very simple life as a farmer for many generations and now wants to help you as a farmer. Um, so whatever they're an expert at, they'll be assigned to you. And I've had uh, wonderful experiences with my spirit guides in the past. Uh, the first interaction I had was with one I nicknamed Studley. Um, I regret, by the way, I guess I could ask today, but I regret not actually asking him his name. And I was working in my family room. I was ironing, um, clothes for the next day for everyone. And um, I happened to notice at a corner of my eye, this very handsome man uh, standing uh, by my uh, treadmill, just leaning on it, looking at me. And he did it for about three days before I decided maybe I should ask him who he is and what he wants. Um, I did. I wasn't, I wasn't scared of him. I didn't think he was a ghost or anything I should fear. I just didn't understand why he was there. And uh, he eventually, when I did ask him who he was and what he wanted, um, he simply said, I'm your spirit guide. And he stayed with me for quite a while and he led me towards my work. Um, step by step by step, he set up um, workshops. He set up reading. He sent people. Uh, he was amazing. I, I miss him today because eventually he did leave and he was replaced by another spirit guide. And eventually uh, my spirit guides turned into groups of spirit guides. But um, he was the first one in my adulthood that I really got to know um, in a very connected kind of way. And uh, that's what a spirit guide does. They don't always appear to you. They only appear to you when they feel you're ready. Sometimes you may hear them. Sometimes you might confuse them with a, an angel, but um, they're there and they always know what is needed and the perfect course of action to take. And I know sometimes my spirit, my clients and my other uh, spiritual peers, they can, they can become frustrated with the amount of time that something takes or the amount of even trying to connect to a spirit guide. And sometimes it's not easy for everyone. And I used to go through that myself. Um, but I will tell you that the teacher knows what it's doing and what he or she is doing and when they should appear and how they should run it. They know when the student is ready. So trust, 
that if you do want to have an interaction with your spirit guide, they will guide you towards that and they will do it in the perfect way and the perfect time. Because as I said, they're perfect in what they do. And as with the angels and with your part loved ones, you are welcome to talk to your to your spirit guide whenever you want to. They're there. They're there for you. Now you have to hear them though. As I said, back up, get detached, hear them. And then you also need to take action. Now, taking action can come in the knowing of, I should do this. It can also come with synchronistic signs around you. Um, these are always going to be one of these people telling you what to do. And um, so, meaning your angels and spirit guides. Um, so yes, take action when you see that it's something that should be done because that is what their job is, is to guide you to do that. So in this heavier time in our lives where we are really being pummeled by the negative news and the people around us and distresses of everyday life, of the job, of our relationships, when we're tired at times, when we feel alone, when we feel sad, please know there's always something or someone there with a hand on your shoulder or a light touch in your hair, trying to let you know that you're not alone. So look around you, even look at the sky. Watch for the odd things. Watch for do what doesn't make sense. I just said to a client yesterday, if it's weird, if you can't explain it, it's most likely heaven. I think all the time it's heaven. And it will present itself. You don't even have to watch for it all that hard. Just be alert to if something's happening over and over again. If a bird is staring at you through a window. If a butterfly keeps following you around the yard and landing on you. If the clouds have formed into an angel. If you're praying to a loved one and a rainbow suddenly appears in the sky. If you come into your king size bed and there is a penny in the middle of the bed and you know you didn't drop any pennies there. These were all signs that your loved ones are around you. If a light dysfunctions and it's fine the next day. If you feel a light touch through your hair and there's nothing flying around you and there's nothing in your hair, these were all signs of your loved ones. One time I was very sad and I actually felt wings in my hair and I knew that was an angel. If you see a white feather out of nowhere, that's the sign of an angel. Our imagination is a gift from God. And many people feel or, or question or are, I want to say are concerned that when they do see signs from heaven, is it just their imagination? The answer is, I would say probably 99.5% of the time, no. Because you see your imagination, you have to work at it. When you use your imagination, you are thinking up the colors you're thinking up the emotions. You're working it. Like in a daydream. We're going to get every little specific thing right. But when heaven is showing you signs, your brain shut down at that time. Your imagination is not working. It's plopping in on you. It's happening in spite of you. So please know, it's not your imagination. Your loved ones are near you. And they love you unconditionally, immeasurably, immeasurably. No matter who you are, what you've done, and what your purpose is. 
but always remember it is it is important to be kind to others to be respectful of others it's such an emotional time yesterday someone was not unkind was not kind to me but i understood that their emotions had nothing to do with me and that I was just getting the venting of it, the brunt of it. And so I was able to get past it. It was just a moment. And it won't ruin my day or my week. But it's always important to be kind to each other, to be thoughtful of each other, to express ourselves always with kindness and gratitude and thoughtfulness and love. You don't know what anybody else is going through. Even if you think you have an idea, you don't know. Our angels and our loved ones and our spirit guides in heaven all want us to take care of each other, all want us to love each other, all want us to respect each other. It's so important, especially during this time. Always walk around in a state of love. I promise you, if you do that on a consistent basis, you will see wonders and miracles around you. Because what you put out, you get back. This week, live in a state of love, live in a state of kindness. To all those near you and throw up an extra little high to all those invisible helpers around you that are there no matter what for they love you more than you can imagine they know your heart they know your soul they know who you truly are and they'll always be there when you need them Thank you so much for joining me on this Sunday. (laughs) I hope it's a beautiful day for you wherever you are. Remember to check out my website at lisahop.com. And also, please like and follow my Facebook page under Spiritual Coach Lisa Hop on Facebook. And also um, on Amazon.com, please check out my books. Take these steps now to change your life and affirmations for everyday life. They help you to manifest the life of your dreams and to feel a stronger connection to heaven. They are available on Amazon.com under author Lisa M. Hop. Thank you for joining me again. And I look forward to talking to you next Sunday. Take care and many blessings. Bye-bye.